Welcome to Electron Online and here's an example how we can also use the spectrum of the reflected light to determine what moons are made out of potentially planets as well. Here's a good example, the moon of Europa, one of the large moons of Jupiter, and we believe that the moon is primarily covered with a thick crust of ice and underneath that ice there may be a liquid ocean of water. So how do we know that? How do we know that Europa is primarily covered by ice. Well, one of the things we can find is that when we look at the, when we take close-up pictures of Europa, and we have done so with satellites that have traveled there, we can then notice that there's virtually no cratering on the surface. There's only one big visible crater on Europa, which means that the crust must be relatively new, meaning that it must be constantly being rearranged and reshaped, and so it being made out of ice floating on water would be a good example of why we think that's the case. On the Earth, when we have, of course, the ice on the, on the um, Arctic Ocean, it's constantly reshaping, cracking, moving, and so forth, and we assume that that's probably the same thing that's happening in Europa. But do we have evidence, hard evidence, hard scientific evidence, that Europa is covered by ice? Well, when we look at the diagram here, notice that the black line represents what we would call the signature, the spectral signature of ice. And you can see that if you shine light, sunlight on the ice, that you get a reflection that kind of looks like this according to these particular wavelengths. Now these are wavelengths in micrometers, so therefore that's no longer in the visible light range. Visible light range would be about here between 400 and 700 nanometers, which is 0.4 to 0.7 uh, micrometers. So you can see that this is reflected light in the infrared uh, radiation band, and that's what we would expect with the temperature on uh, Europa probably being somewhere in the neighborhood of 110, 120 Kelvin, you can imagine that the, uh, the light being reflected would be in that particular wavelength, in that range. But notice if the black line represents a spectrum of ice, and then you look at the spectrum of the light coming from Europa, you see almost the identical match on top of that, except for the very beginning here, most of the curve is, follows very, very closely to the spectrum of what we call the spectrum of ice, and therefore we have some strong evidence here that the, that the uh, Europa is covered with ice. Um, hard to argue when you see the data like this. Uh, notice another interesting aspect of it is that this vertical axis represents the percentage of the fraction of the light that is being reflected uh, back from the surface, so that would be the incoming sunlight, so here we have the sun coming in, shining Europa, the light being reflected, and notice that on some of these frequencies, almost 100%, almost all of the light gets reflected, it's about 95% in this particular band, and this would be very nearly the uh, visible light band, you can see on the visible light spectrum, that almost all of the light that is inbound in Europa gets reflected back to the Earth. As the frequencies or as the wavelengths get longer, we get more and more into the infrared. You can see that the percentage drops because it's not as efficient at reflecting light at those wavelengths compared to light in the visible light range. But here again, that's the way we determine what things in the universe are made out of. So we can analyze the spectrum of the light coming back from, from objects, in this case, reflected light, no, reflected sunlight coming off Europa, and almost without a doubt, we can say Europa is probably com almost completely covered by water ice, and that's how we do that.